Some treatment planning systems require the measurement of what is called a dosimetric leaf gap or DLG for short. So what is DLG? We will start with this quiz. Take a moment to answer it. Rounded end MLCs have different transmission through the leaf body due to the rounded end. This affects the relation between the light field and the radiation field. Eclipse uses DLG as one of the parameters to model the rounded ends of the MLCs, getting the optimum value of DLG assures that the modulated plans match the machine's ability to deliver the fluence. IMRT treatment plan will not be acceptable if the DLG value is not appropriate for the machine. In this educational video, we will demonstrate the sweeping gap method to measure DLG using an ion chamber. If you have Varian Eclipse TM, you have probably heard of DLG measurement. Other TPSs require different parameters for MLC modeling. Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about dosimetric leaf gap or DLG for short. To perform the measurement, we need the following tools which consist of solid water blocks with an insert of a 0.6 cc chamber, calibrated 0.6 cc ionization chamber, calibrated electrometer, triax cables to connect the ionization chamber with the electrometer. Vendor provided DLG measurement files and calculation sheet for each energy. To do the measurement, we have to be at the reference geometry. This means we are using 10 by 10 centimeter squared field size and 100 centimeters SSD for a 6 MV energy. If you have a solid water phantom that is big enough, you can use a depth of 10 centimeter. But here, we are using 6 centimeter depth for this phantom. You want to choose a depth that excludes electron contamination. It is important to place your chamber perpendicular to the direction of the MLC movement. This can also be measured using an SAD setup. The DLG value does not depend on the setup as long as all the measurements are done using a consistent setup. Before we start delivering the sweeping gap fields, let's make sure that our Excel sheet is ready. We will be measuring the collected charge for every sweeping gap field. I have used seven vendor provided fields each with the following gap, 2, 4, 6, 10, 14, 16, and 20 millimeters. You see them here in this column. We expect a linear behavior, so of course, you can choose different leaf gap widths if you create the plans yourself. Let's start the delivery. Remember, each time a field finishes, we write down the collected charge. I chose to work in machine QA mode on my LINAC. You can use the service mode or clinical mode for delivering this plan. The service mode needs more privilege, which is under physics control. The first thing we have to do is warm up the electrometer while the ion chamber is connected. I will be giving 500 MUs with a 6 MV photon beam with a dose rate of 600 MUs per minute. I will be using the machine QA mode, which will allow me to load the plan. This is a DICOM file vendor provided, as we described previously in the needed tools section. We will open the plan that we exported to our system. In this case, it is the 6x underscore DLG underscore STD 120 DCM file that matches our machine, TrueBeam LINAC. This is standard for all Varian Millennium 120 leaf MLC LINACs. We have to override it to make it match our machine type. Select all next and then convert. Now the plan is ready to be delivered using our machine. You will need to deliver the following fields. Open field, MLC bank, A closed field, MLC bank, B closed field, MLC fields with various gaps. We measured 15.61 nanocoulombs for the open field. Now, we will deliver the fields for each closed bank, bank A, and then bank B. 
the averaged reading was 0.227 nanocoulombs for the closed MLC banks. The ratio of measured charge of the closed MLC banks to the open field is the MLC transmission. This value is needed to model the MLC. In our case, we have measured a value of 0.0145 for 6 MV. We have finished delivering all the fields and entered their value. As you can see from the Excel sheet, plotting the collected charge versus the gap width gave us a straight line. If you don't get a straight line, check your setup. The DLG value is the intercept the line makes with the negative x-axis. You can read it from the chart. It is easier and more accurate to have Excel calculate it. As you see, for our setup and energy, the intercept is minus 0.1355 mm. The DLG is the absolute number, so it is 0.1355 mm. Now you might ask, what does an intercept of minus 0.1355 mm means? We invite you to write your thoughts in the comments section below the video. Now let's see how to enter the DLG value into the TPS. Log in into Eclipse. Select Administration, then RT Administration Workspace. Go to Radiation and Imaging Devices tab. Select your LINAC machine. In our case, it is TrueBeam02. Then hop over the MLC tab. Select which energy you want to modify. In our case, it is 6x. Then you can edit the transmission factor value. Then edit the dosimetric leaf gap value as well. Hit save and exit the workspace. Now you have successfully entered the values for transmission factor as well as dosimetric leaf gap for 6 MV photon beam. Karim, after we've finished the measurement, I do have some questions. Does the DLG value change with the off-axis measurement? Yes, if we take an example of a flattened field, of course we're using a flattening filter, so we know that there is a differential beam hardening towards the center compared to off-axis. So the beam is slightly softer off-axis. So we'd expect the transmission to be different due to the fact that we have a slightly softer beam, and that's hence the DLG. The other factor to consider is also that we have a different angle of incidence from the source, so that will also contribute. Noting the fact that the Varian MLC is a non-focused MLC, so any change in angle of incidence will change uh, transmission factors. Is there a difference between the DLG for, let's say, 6MV and 10MV, or they are the same? Yes, taking the example of 6 and 10 MV, of course we know that they have different photon energy spectra and thence we would naturally expect them to have different transmission values through the MLC and therefore uh, resulting in a different DLG measurement. How to validate the value of DLG? Now we've measured that DLG and inputted the values into our planning system we now need to validate that that's what we get when we deliver affluence. So there are various standard uh, fluence patterns, test patterns. Um, the most common one is one called the chair test, uh, which you deliver, uh, take that measurement and then compare it with the predicted fluence you'd get from your planning system. The nice thing about the chair test, it has two tests in one. It can, measure to, it can compare the transmission and the DLG in your fluence pattern. Should we include the DLG as part of our regular QA program? Along with your other standard routine uh, MLC QA test, I think it's a good idea to include the DLG as part of your uh, QA program, whether that's annual or more frequent. Um, particularly also, of course, on an ad hoc basis, if you have a repair to the MLC, if there is a recalibration of the MLC, or if there's any software upgrade both to your planning system or the MLC controller software. A chamber with 0.6 cc volume may be used to measure DLG and the value obtained will need to be tweaked in the TPS using the Varian chair or an IMRT plan. Till a satisfactory TPS DLG value can be found that will get better agreement on QA plans. If a 0.04 cc chamber were used to measure DLG, the value measured will be close to the DLG value used in the TPS and may need a small tweak to get better QA agreement. It should be noted that the, all the measurements to fill the DLG Excel sheet need to be done with a single chamber, 0.6 cc or 0.04 cc. If the annual constancy test for machine measured DLG value is measured with the 0.6 cc, it will be different than the TPS DLG value. Even though 0.04 cc chamber will give a better agreement for the TPS DLG, 
the transmission value measured using a 0.04 cc chamber is not appropriate for entering into the TPS. The transmission under MLC bank A and B will need to be measured with a 0.6 cc chamber to be appropriate to use in the TPS. Summary. We have explained the basics of DLG measurement for MLC modeling for Varian TPS. We have shown the equipment required to measure DLG using the ion chamber method. We have shown the data entry to obtain a DLG value for a non-SRS SBRT beam using the intercept method. We have shown how to enter the DLG value into the TPS. We have not shown how to validate the DLG against measurement using a Varian chair test. This will be addressed in a follow-up video.